Imagine driving into the middle of the countryside. So these towers are all over down here, right? Eh? Finding a very high tower and jumping off it in the middle of the night. So that's where it all started. Yeah, I took him for his first jump here. Evan Dickinson is talking about his little brother Graham and their first base jump together, parachuting from this tower just about six years ago. I didn't think he would actually go through with it. It involved trespassing. You gotta go on the outside and then get your fingers into the mesh there, climb up the anti-climb. Not to damage anything, just as base jumpers put it, to borrow altitude. It's a long way up there to me. It's a quick way down though. 500 feet, you got three seconds before you pull your parachute, and then uh, maybe like a 10 to 15 second canopy ride. So not very long. It was the beginning of an unbelievable climb that made his young brother the best in the world and led him to a tragic end just one month ago. How would you describe him? Uh, Graham, in a few words, type of guy that just lived his life the way he wanted to live it. Um, and lived it with passion and like lived it to the fullest. Growing up, I mean, I was always a bit of the crazy one, but then with him, he took it to another level. Um, so yeah, he was definitely an adrenaline junkie as well. In those early years in Ontario, if you didn't jump off towers, you jumped off buildings. Sneaking inside, seeking out those few seconds of adrenaline kick, usually in the middle of the night, on the ride down. They jumped together a lot. I guess as the big brother, you kind of always looked out for him. Yeah, definitely, right? Like even growing up, that's kind of like instilled into that like kind of protective nature. and. I mean, I definitely took that over like when I saw him getting into skydiving and base jumping. But Graham Dickinson left his big brother behind, heading for the West Coast scene, looking for bigger and better jumps. Is it really blinking? Uh -huh, it's blinking. And what he found was a notoriety which at that time he wasn't looking for. It was 2014. And after you go, if you could just hold it out like that. Oh, definitely I will. Cool. He decided to wrench open the doors on the peak-to-peak -peak gondola at Whistler. Good luck! Three, two, one. <laughs> and jump. <laughs> That's not legal. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not legal, but I mean, the actual jumping aspect of it isn't illegal. I mean, base jumpers, for the most part, are, are pretty respectful when they are doing that sort of stuff. And yeah. I mean, there's ethics in the sport of leaving no trace yeah. and um, making sure you don't damage anything while you're there. But with the camera rolling, he did jump and there was damage. The video wasn't supposed to be shared online, but someone did. It went viral, millions watched the video. <laughs> the landing wasn't as smooth as it looked. Whistler Blackholm was not amused, they called the RCMP. <laughs> Graham Dickinson decided to get out of the country. Brother Evan says it sent him on a path to even bigger stardom. I, I mean, I think it had almost like a positive spin for him because, um, Obviously, he left. He left the BC area, and then uh, he went and met up with like a friend in Dubai. Have fun. Graham started to really develop his skills as a wingsuit jumper, doing something called proximity flying. The unique suit allows the pilot to fall with precise maneuvering, flying at high speeds, very close to things like the cliff base. before popping the parachute and bringing himself in for a landing. Oh, crying, that was so much fun. <laughs> they call this a wingsuit? Yep, two vents, one on each wing that'll yep. inflate the, uh, the wing, and then you've got uh, one on the leg wing will inflate that as well. Soon the student became the teacher, 
While statistics are hard to come by, wingsuit base jumping is globally considered one of the hottest sports in the 18 to 35 year old single male demographic. Graham, who was quickly considered a top performing or elite pilot, started teaching older brother Evan everything he could about this even more extreme aspect of an already extreme sport. So where in this thing, you can get up to speeds of what? 200 kilometers an hour? Yeah, definitely. You, that's the thing about the larger suits is that you can fly them really fast. There's a bit of rubber here, but <laughs> you going in, it's gonna hurt. Oh yeah, like there's definitely, yeah, definitely not much protection on it. They met in exotic places in Europe and around the world, places with great cliff faces, Mecca for the base jumping community. He used to joke and tell me that he fell in love with me before he even met me. Kristen Johnson met Graham jumping together in Dubai. It's super nice. Now she works as a professional skydiver. These are all the packing areas. In Paris, California. Yeah, so there's the airplane taking off. Graham was my best friend. He, how do I describe him? I don't even know. He's one of the weirdest, most unique people I've met in like all of the best ways. They quickly became very tight, jumping together, living together for months while driving across Europe, looking for new places to launch. And a lot of people would describe him as a free spirit. That's definitely Graham. Like he did whatever he wanted to do, regardless of whether or not that was a good decision. I mean, fearless, some would call him reckless, but if you actually watched him jump and you knew like this, the planning that went into a lot of the stuff he did, and he was an aggressive flyer, but he was super calculated in everything that he did. As Graham got better and more daring, he attracted groups like the World Wingsuit League, where he was profiled as one of its top racers. Companies like GoPro offered up free cameras, and online, the videos attracted more and more attention. He'd made it to the top pretty much. Yeah. yeah, like it's not a very, obviously it's not a televised sport. There's no kind of way to, to make it like that. Um, it's been popularized mainly from like YouTube. Within like the jumping community, yeah, he was, I mean, he was arguably the best, uh, one of the best pilots in the world, wingsuit pilots, yeah. This is definitely, this is the video that made him made him famous. He had like wow. 14 million hits on it. That was what Graham was all about, was getting real real low, real close to the ground, at a real fast speed. You could call it like proximity flying or terrain yeah. flying. Generally proximity flying was close to like the side of a mountain. But as newer jumps became opened up, terrain flying became more of a thing that people would do. So now you're flying like over trees, you're flying down in crevices. Um, some pretty crazy looking stuff. Yeah, it's definitely some pretty crazy looking stuff. But there are also these videos online, graphic video showing what can happen. Hey, stay awake, buddy, talk to me. Well, you know, people are gonna watch this. You know they're gonna watch this and they're gonna go, those people are crazy. They must have a death wish. I look at it on the other way, whereas I have a life wish because base jumping, like I've said it before, like, and I'm sure Graham felt the same way, is I would rather live a life experiencing everything that I've experienced through base jumping and die a shorter life than to live and die an old man and not having had those experiences. Yeah. Online, as people watch jumps like this one, Graham trying to hit a target at high speed during a competition in China. Coming very close to a cable car system, some started to openly question the risks he was taking. Besides all of your astonishing skills, they wrote, there will be the day you run out of luck. This has gone way beyond just bordering on the insane. Challenging death? You can't always win, you know. It certainly worried Kristen Johnson. Graham was probably one of the one of the best wingsuit terrain flyers, and I think he felt like he needed to uphold that reputation to all of his fans. 
Like as much as so there was that pressure. Yeah, I mean he felt it. Like he made a few comments to me, like you know that's like that's why people like this page. That's why people wanted to see his videos. Yeah, look at this clear blue skies. Beautiful ocean view. Let me walk backwards. Show you what it's all about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Graham liked China, liked the appreciation for the sport there. On January 24th, less than a week after his 29th birthday, Graham posted this picture with the words, feeling like he is dreaming, from Tianmen Mountain National Park in China. The next day, out flying by himself, he was killed. Evan hasn't slept properly since. You knew. Yeah hard moment yeah it was definitely a really really rough morning for me and then I unfortunately had to call my mother and uh, and tell her oh, wow. which uh, was as heartbreaking as finding out the news myself was having to to tell her his parents traveled to China to see him one last time before cremation and to bring him home Evan isn't sure about wingsuiting anymore. You've lost a few friends. Yeah, I mean, since I started, probably, let's say like over 20 easily, 20, 25. So you're having a rough ride at the moment. Yeah, like it's definitely tough. Like I don't know, I don't know how eager I am to, to do it again. I don't know if, uh, if I'll ever see a wingsuit base jump again. I know uh, my mother would definitely prefer it that way. But uh, the other hand, I know Graham would definitely prefer it if I went and went on and did what I wanted to do. But uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely made me reconsider ever jumping again for sure. This weekend, his friends will gather in Toronto to say goodbye. Evan will also bring some of his little brother's ashes here to the place where they first jumped together. The place that was really the beginning of the end. Red Sharon, CBC News, near Formosa, Ontario.